Okay, jetzt kommen wir zum zweiten Vortrag äh, von Herrn Vorburg, der als Functional Application Manager und Web Archivar arbeitet. Das ist eine Selbstbeschreibung von stoischer Kürze, ähnlich der Kürze der Annotationszeile von Pelagius. Herr Vorburg zeigt uns aber, was ein Mensch, der es will, im Web tun kann, in einer äh, außerordentlich eindrucksvollen Form, die vieles schon umgesetzt hat, äh, worüber andere noch lange nachdenken oder nachgedacht haben und partiell auch noch nachdenken werden. Herr Vorburg, Sie sind dran. Okay, danke. Okay, ja. Yeah. Like I was introduced, I'm going to uh, give a presentation about a project which is a hobby uh, project. Uh, indeed, I work for the Dutch National Library and uh, I started working there as a web archivist, so I became quite handy in getting data from various websites and uh, deal with them. Uh, and, but nowadays I also uh, work as the, you could say, owner of the, the metadata system of the Dutch National Library. So that's something about my background, but this is about a hobby project. And the story begins, in a sense, with my children. This picture was taken a few years ago. That was about when the, my project started. It, it started with them. Because when you have children, you want to do fun things with them, and you want to learn them uh, things. So this, it's not a pretty picture. I took it from Street View. Couldn't find anything better, but what you see here is it's not really visible, although there is a road sign that tells you there is an, uh, an, an ancient fort. It's not Roman, it's not even that old. It's a 19th uh, century fort, and it's a very exciting place to go with your kids. There's things you can crawl into, and it's, it's a very exciting place. So I went there a lot. Uh, but then I learned there was also a Roman, there was also Roman history at that site. There wasn't only a uh, 19th century fort, but it was also a Roman fort, but you couldn't really see anything from it, or it was at least not obvious where the Roman remains were. Uh, and that fascinated me. I wanted to, to be able to see what was there. I wanted to be able to see something like, yeah, in this image, I wanted to be able to see the location of the castle and the road to the other places and I wanted to see where the Vicus was and that was what I wanted to obtain. To so I started, well, first of all I started searching the internet a lot. What is there to be found about my own uh, environment on the internet? And one of the first sources I came across was on uh, Wikipedia. There were pages on uh, Germania Inferior and there was also uh, a part of this, uh, this, this, this image, the, 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 the Tabula Poitingeriana. Uh, that was the, the most, yeah, you, yeah, it was, I think, the most detailed information I came across when I just started. So I started to play with that information to obtain a sense of, of, of spatial sense of the area. And a fun thing would be, I thought, is to have a kind of a route planner to see, wait, when you live here in the, in, uh, in the area of uh, Vexio and you want to go to uh, Forum Hadriani, which is current day Voorburg, which is my last name, how would I travel? Would I travel through the northern route along the Lim Limes or would I travel another, another way? So I just gathered some data and I played with it and I made a, a very simple route planner using data using an algorithm I also found on Wikipedia. And it was very much fun. And I thought, well, it would be nice if you could find data on all the places that are on the Tabula Poitingeriana. But I thought, now that's impossible. That would take too much work. It's, but then I bumped into data that was published by Richard Tolbert. And he had published uh, the connections of all places found on the Tabula Poitingiana. And I already had a route planner system, so I only, the one thing I had to do was to import that data 
into the algorithm, into the data structure I had. And so in one day work, I had a route planner for the whole Roman Empire. That was very exciting, particularly the first time I asked it, I want to go from Vexio to, to Rome. What places should I pass? And then it gave me a list of places. It was very, very exciting. So that created a lot of energy for me to work on, on the road planner. And I wanted to find the geolocations of the roads of, of the cities. I didn't have them. So it was a lot of work. And I wanted to have a nice interface. It was a lot of work. But it resulted in this website. I think it's a very nice website. But it's not what I wanted to do or what I wanted to see. What I wanted to have was something more, well, you could say simple, perhaps. I just wanted to have it on my mobile phone. I just wanted to be able to see where am I now and where was the fort and where was, yeah, where was everything in Roman days. So I created, to start with, something that, yeah, like this, a very simple HTML5 web page. And the data that is shown on, on the page comes from simple static files with all, yeah. So when I wanted to add a point or a road, I had to edit the static files by hand, just a text file I had to edit. But it wasn't really handy for me to, to edit the data, so I thought, well, maybe I should get a database behind it and it's much easier to edit the data. Hey, and when I put the database behind it, I can open it up for other people. That would be nice, others can use it too, add data too. So I started thinking about a way to do that. So I created a list of requirements. Well, in hindsight, I must say, because when I started, I didn't have a proper list. But in hindsight, it was something like this. What I wanted to do it should be primarily a map, because I wanted to get a sense of the locations of the areas. There should be categorized markers on it, and lines, like roads, for example. And there should be lemmas text behind it, but it's basically about the, the map. And I want it to be uh, yeah, accessible for the, by the general public. And I, I don't like borders because, yeah, the Rome, when you talk about the Romans, you talk about yeah, all kinds of countries, languages, and it's, it's a bit, I think it's sad that people are working very hard to, to put information for people who are, who are native to a certain language but others can't read it, it's very sad. So I wanted to create a system that when somebody adds a marker to it, it will be added to any language accessible by everybody. People, I talked about this idea, said you really need version management, so I worked on that. And of course I wanted to be in the spirit of Wikipedia, open source and open data. Uh, yeah, that's why I considered using uh, the MediaWiki software, but there was a problem. I thought maybe it's not true, but I'm not a specialist, I'm not even a programmer. But a problem I think with Wikipedia is when I, yeah, somebody in Germany creates a great page on a, on, a German, on a fort on the Limes, then it's not automatically updated in the Dutch page. Not even the location, while well, that's not language dependent. And locations were the main thing for me, so I didn't see a good way to use uh, MediaWiki for it. And the other thing is, uh, I wanted to have primarily markers on a map, and then you need very structured data input. And I didn't see a way how I could use MediaWiki to enforce that kind of input. So I skipped the idea, but I thought, well, it would be cool to have just wiki text formatting. And I did a small study of that, but I couldn't see how I could get the code of Media Wiki to work independent of the rest of the code. So I skipped that too and I decided to create my own tool. Yeah, I couldn't find any alternatives. I created a custom tool. Yeah, of course, not only for mobile but also for desktop. I used some yeah, general internet tools. Uh, instead of wiki text, I selected the C CK editor. It's quite easy to use. And it had to be multi-language. And yeah, the data, I didn't, since I work in a library and there's a lot of talk about open data, sharing data, one of the things I wanted to do is to have also the data behind the map available in an open format, preferably JSON or XML. 
so that's available in that format. And uh, others can build services on the data that uh, Wiki uh, publishes. It's also, uh, when you do a search, you can download it as a KML uh, file. And since a few weeks, there's also a JavaScript uh, widget available, so you can include the map on your own uh, website. And the code is also available on uh, GitHub. Now, most of you probably have seen the website, I guess, I hope. Uh, this is just a few from uh, the Trier area. You can see in purple there are a lot of villas, in yellow there are temples. And when you click on a marker, then this page uh, comes up. As you can see, there are also images of the area. And I had been thinking about that for a long time. There should be a, a way to upload images, but it would be quite complex to program in a good way. Uh, but then I thought a trick to get images on my site by using the Panoramio service. I just asked the Panoramio service, hey, do you have any images of this area? Uh, in a and usually when you go to a Roman site, there will be Roman images. So it's not always Roman related, but quite often it is. Here's another view uh, of, of the map, a bit zoomed out. And here it displays the, the background tiles that uh, Elton also mentioned that are created by uh, Johan Alfeld. So that's basically based on uh, Pleiades uh, data. Okay, now you've seen it. How is it used in practice? You know, there are about 70 unique visitors uh, each day on average. About 19 people have uh, registered on the website, have created an account. And the people who registered are from all over. There are people from the United States, quite a few from Germany, from the Netherlands, from France, from Spain, mostly Western Europe. Or, yeah. Well, 27 users have added new content. And I did expect when I started it that there would be many users who added just a few sites, but that was not how it worked. It was very, very other pattern came out. Yeah, over half of the people added more than 12 objects. And number one, the most active user added yeah, nearly 2,000 objects. It's quite amazing. I never expected that it would work that way. And even number two added quite a lot of size. So now we have, uh, yeah, going towards 13,000 uh, geolocated objects. And when you see this, this, this data, it doesn't add up. That's because the data I show here is about manually edited, edited data. Uh, and I've also added a lot of data from the site that I obtained from other databases that are available uh, on the website from other free sources spend a lot of time finding data on, on Roman archaeology and try to see if I could merge it in, into my own uh, database. But I think about 3,000 objects have been added uh, manually by people, including myself. Yeah. About uh, yeah, the data sources, uh, my first intention was to just start with my own local environment and I expected that slowly it would grow into to cover a bigger area. But then yeah, I already had the Roman root planner which contained data from the whole Roman Empire. and So I decided, yeah, why not import it into the, the Wiki uh, website? So I used that. The Omnisvii data is, is the names are ba based on a set from Richard Tolbert. I use the Tabula Poitingiana DA website a lot. Wikipedia also sometimes for structured uh, data imports. I used uh, Pleiades. I wasn't aware of Pleiades when I started this project. It would have saved me a lot of time. I used geonames. Uh, later on, an important uh, source was uh, the Livius Org website. I got a data donation from him. And I wrote a special tool to import data, especially for that data, because when you import data, you have to check that the location you are importing is not already on the website. Uh, and I also wanted to, to get an indication of the visibility of the objects I added. When you add an object to, uh, to Wiki, 
you have to give a, a category, like for example, is it a, a Vicus or is it a Villa or is it a Fort or whatever, but you also have to add an uh, indicator of the visibility and it's very crude, it's just visible or not visible. People may decide what, what it means, but uh, when I add data using uh, my data import tool, I use uh, Panoramio to see if there are any, any images from Roman uh, objects. And of course, I also check uh, the satellite uh, images from, uh, from Google Maps, because very often you can see Roman objects already on Google Maps. Uh, another important data source I just started to use is the Romac.org, uh, which is a database of about 600 uh, aqueducts, and there are also many tracings, quite spectacular. And I also work together with uh, Johan Aalveld uh, from the Rechnum, in Rechnum Francorum uh, project, who also created the tiles. We often share data. Yeah. I'd also like to mention, particularly, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the, the, the differences you have in, in how different countries approach heritage data, because in the, in the UK they have excellent websites in very much detailed, detailed information and it's great stuff to use, very different from France for example where you have to search very hard and also the Netherlands is not, not perfect. Okay, that's, that's, that was about the current state of affairs. I have very much I have a lot of plans to do with this site, but the big problem is I don't have that much time, so I'm all the time thinking, oh, what should I do next, what I should do next, but now the highest on my list is to create a feature for users to, to add lines, like roads. Often people request me, ah, I have this information on a road, can I add it? And of course I can add it to the site, but the users can't, so there should be a way to do that. Uh, that's the next thing I'm going to work on. Um, for the Roman road planner, I've added Pleiades identifiers to, to be part of the Pelagios network. And, yeah, and I also want to do that for, uh, for the Wiki uh, website. And, yeah, when I started this project, I was hardly a programmer. I no, I was no programmer. Now I'm hardly a programmer. So yeah, the code quality, when a professional looks at it, he... Uh, yeah, I hope <laughs> they, they will. I hope it doesn't scare them off. But, so I want to work on that. And further now, you could say Wiki is a community website, but still there are no real community features. People can't see each other's email addresses, so they can't communicate with each other through email, and there's no such thing as a forum. So I think I can improve the website by adding community features uh, to it. And like I said, on my, uh, on my requirements list was also version management. And I did implement that, but it's not visible in any way on the website now. So it might be uh, good to, to have it more visible to see what has changed in, uh, in various look, markers. Well, finally, yeah, maybe it's not the best way to end the presentation because it's a bit negative. But there are some concerns, of course. When I started, like I told you, it was just playing around with stuff that's available on the internet, playing with Roman data, just for fun. But now it has become a bit more serious. A lot of people spend hours of time working on this website, so that made me responsible. That's never what I intended. So now I have concerns too. Yeah, one thing is the data quality, and it can go two ways. I never expected that. But of course, too little, I was afraid of that. But too much quality is also a concern. Recently somebody put information on my website and a few day, days later he asked me please remove it because I have been in contact with archaeologists with the data I added and they said please don't publish it yet, remove it, please. So that can be a problem too. And another thing is the copyright situation. It's, it's, it's very unclear copyright situation because uh, on, on, the, on the text page, I, I copied Wikipedia as much as possible, so I say the license is uh, Creative Commons attributes share alike. But I think that is valid for the text, the text that people add. But 
I have some doubts if you could copyright things like uh, a geo coordinate. I don't think that's copyrightable at all, so I don't. So there's not really a problem there, but things got more complex and I couldn't resist it when I added the data that was created by Kees Pasgier from the Romac project. He has this great aqueduct tracings and he says, yeah, it's not for commercial use, so he uses a different license. I couldn't resist adding it, but so now if you want to use my data services, you should be warned and you're, yeah, I warn you now, but it's not yet on the site that there are various copyright restrictions uh, with the material. So that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, like I said, code quality. And yeah, I didn't ask this, I did ask this question to Elton also, yeah. I've become responsible now for what I created, so continuity is, is an issue I've, I've been thinking about. Now I'm just one person doing this, and yeah, maybe I should, ideally there should be more people involved, or there should be an organization that gives me some kind of backup, or I'm thinking about a way to, uh, to solve that, but I ha don't have the answer yet. It's not re really urgent, but it's something I should uh, think about. So that's my, uh, the story I wanted to tell you. So. Yeah. Are there any questions? Yes, thank you very much. I think we went down uh, in terms of granularity to a one-person army <laughs> that you uh, embody in a way with your project, which is absolutely uh, impressive, I think. Uh, in a way, also the way you started your presentation reminds me about the discussion about the digital self-empowering envisioned by uh, the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s discussion about personal computing and what it is good for because the computing paradigm first was a paradigm for the closed world of the military industrial complex in the United States as it was discussed in Berkeley, the place where our friend Eric Kenza is today. And that was turned around to say uh, into the liberating, self-empowering paradigm. And your, your way of starting your presentation with your kids and thinking about what you can do and then trying to, to, to go that way, to go down that way and add and add and add. Um, knowledge and 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 yeah ways to do things is a wonderful uh, example for that and it is also um, giving a tough question to the institutions that hold and manage and produce knowledge I mean uh, what you do could be seen by the foreign ministry or by any funding institution as a test how good and how accessible knowledge is that gets produced by taxpayers' money year in and year out. That means if institutions also like the German Archaeological Institute are able to, uh, to put up their data, to provide their data in a way that you, the self-empowered digital citizen, can grab it and put it into your way of discourse, then we are okay, then we did our job. If we don't, then we are not okay, and we have to change that. And um, your presentation also shows naturally that as a one-man army, you are able to proceed in a, in a way uh, that is much quicker and much, in the beginning, it's much quicker and easier to jumpstart what you want to do than uh, bigger institutions can do that. And we have to find a way you know, to catch up with your speed. <laughs> While then, at the end of the race, you might get uh, traces of exhaustion and look for uh, yeah, the slow but safe institutional yeah. uh, savior that gives continuity to it. So I think uh, that was a wonderful... Uh, a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. It was a wonderful presentation. And are there any, any questions now? Yeah, Artwin. Uh, I'm wondering if you got in touch with Danz. 
uh, it's very interesting institution yeah. in the Netherlands. Uh, they have a kind of national mm -hmm. um, archaeological um, data center, yeah. and I'm wondering if you could collaborate with them or if they might support you. Yeah. I have been in contact with them. They contacted me uh, after I got a lot of publici publicity on the Roman Root Planner. And they asked me, can we get that data somehow? But uh, then I didn't have the data in the right format. But uh, after preparing my data for the Pelagios project, uh, you could say now it is in the format. Probably they, will, they should be able to take in. So I should contact them again. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, René, we, we, we talk about uh, 1,200 and 500 uh, objects you've located. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, nearly 7,500 by your own and uh, nearly 5,000 by other people. Um, how do you check the quality of the, um, the other people's uh, additions, uh, correctness, and so on? Uh, it, it's only you? Uh, or, or, or what about quality manage management? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, data quality is a bit of a concern. Uh, I don't. I, I almost every day look at the page that displays everything that has been added, uh, and I look at it. But I don't open every new location that has been added. Uh, I open a lot, and I. Uh, yeah, it's too much for me to just to, to just check it and to be sure it's it's right. But uh, there are appears to have been no vandalism yet, so I, but when it grows there might become, they might get vandalism, there might become, yeah, people might, I don't know, that's a, it's a concern, yeah, yeah. All right, other questions? No other questions. Yeah, yeah Rasmus. Okay, uh, there's a question from the technical side. Uh, how does your infrastructure look like, and what would it, well, how would it behave if they're flooding the masses to your website? Yeah. Okay, um, about my infrastructure, uh, I'll go back to the first page of my presentation. Uh, mapping Roman Empire from home. Uh, at home. At my place, I have a computer sitting in uh, the cellar. <laughs> it's a, it's quite old uh, machine. It used to be a desktop, but then I put Ubuntu on it. Then it appeared to be really fast again. But I have a very fast internet connection too. So that's my infrastructure. So I really don't know what happens when <laughs> a lot of people uh, come there. Then, uh, <laughs> would be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? May, may I add two, two more uh, remarks uh, on your talk? Uh, one thing is uh, about the work I did. Uh, the, the good thing is that I'm very short-sighted. When I knew at forehand how much work it would take to do all this, I would never have started. But I just took a step and I took another step. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if I take this, mo this step, and I always underestimated how m much work each step would be, but every time it gave me a lot of energy, whoa, this is cool, should go on. So that's, it's a good thing to be short-sighted and to play with data, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Oh. Uh, maybe find maybe find uh, a way to work together, uh, you and your project and Wikipedia, in a way uh, that make, make, could be a good solution for both parts. Uh, we are possibly able to give you a quality management to check all the coordinates, uh, for example. Uh, I know you are working exactly, but there are some other people who um, <laughs> never, never, never use the reference and yeah. um, there are, there are um, errors about maybe 50 meters, maybe 100 meters uh, by location. Uh, so we have to gather more manpower. You can use our data and our textes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, your your vision, your vision is uh, as I see, 
uh, not only to present the data, um, but uh, the text is to information, to pictures, to and so on. Yeah. We, 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 for example, have an um, archive of uh, 3,000 pictures and plants. And I think uh, that your side is a good place uh, to share them there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it, it would be great to cooperate more. Uh, like I said, when I, when I started to, to look around on the internet, are there any tools I can use? The first thing I thought of was Wikipedia. Maybe it should be, my map should be just a, a front end on Wikipedia data. Perhaps the ideal picture is that now this Wikidata project uh, has started, or this Wikidata initiative, maybe my data someday could be uh, exported and imported into as Wikidata data, and then my site, or maybe it's not even my site anymore, could be just a, a, a thin layer on top of on the, the Wikipedia infrastructure. I think that would be the, the final picture, perhaps, to work towards. Yeah, that sounds very reasonable, and it allows you to allows us to uh, move on, not with a totally pessimistic uh, yeah. view of had I known. Yeah. As you know, Silenus in antiquity is quoted by that uh, what would be good for humans would be to die instantly, or even better, not ever having been born. <laughs> uh, we don't see it that way, and uh, in terms of Wikiorg, Wikipedia is bringing us out of that 